You're listening to the Deep Purple Podcast, a fan podcast about one of the most legendary bands of all time, Deep Purple. We take a look at the music, history, and people behind the band Deep Purple and beyond. Welcome to the Deep Purple Podcast, the first and only podcast devoted to one of the greatest bands in rock history, Deep Purple. Today's episode is episode number 145, BBC Sessions, January of 1969. And coming to you from the windiest suburbs of the Windy City, I'm your host, Nathan Beaudry. And coming to you from the suburbs of Providence, I'm your co-host, John Devilhorns Matola. Devil Horns. Mm -hmm. right. You going to a rock show or something? What's going on? No, I wish, but um, so over over Christmas, my my brother and sister in law picked something up. I uh, can't remember what it was maybe Capri something somewhere in Italy. And they picked me up these little <laughs> these oh. little ornaments. <laughs> you just need a green one now, and you'd have the whole Italian flag. You need a red one and a white one. These little, I'm like, where did you find these? They're like Italy, and it's just like. Um, um who was it was it you were rich when i showed you these and they're like where'd you get that from like malacca's are us <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> the <Malou. laughs> so i got a couple little uh dio dio inspired uh christmas ornaments do you think that they're oh are they ornaments yeah yeah they have like see the um, i'm holding them upwards but uh see, it's oh. Cool. <laughs> oh they're so, like pointing down I know this is like like Dio last in line video. You need to like redrill a little hole in the top so they can be uh, up. I just, if you had a green one, that would be perfect. A little, little Italian, uh, Italian. Yeah, flag. but I mean, yeah, I thought it was kind of odd. Well, first of all, I was like, all right, that's unusual that you guys decide to give me like two, um, <laughs> a red one and a white one. But also that they're that they're upside down, like they wouldn't hang on the tree like right side up, like you know all hail rock like this way yeah, it's still, but, still pretty cool but yeah still pretty awesome there put those down there a little breakable so nice. we're having a like some sort of crazy windstorm all night and into today like whistling like it sounds like like stock footage whistling of <laughs> <laughs> just like, it's like a 30s I, horror movie exactly like i woke up in a, in a in a movie from the 30s where they're like they really have to sell the fact that there's a storm going on all night whistling the house shaking like i've i it's worse than some hurricanes i've lived through and i don't know what the hell's going on and then all of a sudden just started like blizzard conditions snowing outside just just randomly no idea wow. what's super the lows are in the like the low today, I think, is one, and tomorrow it's like negative two or something. So a little chilly, so start some fires this uh, today and try to keep warm. Yeah, we're, we're getting a little bit over here. Not as cold, but there was a cold snap that hit like a couple of days ago where I was like, shit. And I brought out, like, finally brought out the winter coat because it was like, I don't know, 18 like yesterday when I was going to work. I'm like, yikes. And so a couple of days are predicting like three to six inches, which is pretty much like stock snowstorm or snow weather for this area but i'm anticipating that most people are going to lose their friggin' minds and uh <laughs> like they've never seen snow before well for our international listeners it's about negative 18 here and where john is it's about negative seven so i know some people are a little don't uh, don't do the fahrenheit because they've moved on they're in an yes. advanced country um we're a little behind the times here. Uh, my son is really obsessed lately. He's like, dad, will you teach me the metric system? I don't know why. <laughs> it's like, I was like, I guess. I don't know what there is to teach, but I mean, I guess we'll, we'll work <laughs> through it. <laughs> I, was like, I got nothing else to do because um, as I have not mentioned yet, I am uh, I'm home with COVID. Uh, I'm totally fine. Um, not, I was sick for, I don't know, maybe 36 to 48 hours of feeling flu-like and uh, having some pretty mild symptoms enough to be like i want to lie down and take a nap in the middle of the day which i never do but not enough to be any more than that so me and jen both tested positive and um we are isolating from the children wearing a mask in the house which sucks eggs and i can't <laughs> wait to stop doing it so i will uh um I don't, I'm not doing it now because they're all upstairs, but um, yeah, so I think tomorrow is my last day of having to wear a mask 
from my start date and then I can actually return back. So, so far the kids are totally fine. That's good. Well, there you go. <clears throat> Whistling wind, COVID stuck home. Haven't left. The, <laughs> I haven't left the house in the new year. Of course, we're, record, we're recording this way in advance. So by the time this comes out, you might say, Oh my God, he hasn't been out of the house in three weeks, but no, I, I, I but I have been basically not out of the house for almost a full week now. So mm. uh, hopefully my car still starts. <laughs> got a remote starter for christmas so very excited about that to, to just like actually get in a warm car now <laughs> especially after mm. work when you go and when it's you know so it gets cold here so it's negative uh, whatever degrees and you have to get into an ice cold car and your fingers are sticking to the steering wheel it's gonna be very nice mm. oh yeah that's that's definitely something i want to either get stock or installed in my next car Yep, we did it the uh, day uh, after Christmas. They, yeah, I got, I got it, and then we drove the day after Christmas, got it installed, and uh, yeah, very, very excited. Because you don't, um, and now do you, I know you have a garage, but is that particular car do you keep it in the garage or no? Yeah, I do. Um, so yeah, it's it's in the garage. Like I may like during the summer sometimes I'll keep it outside because the kids' bikes are all everywhere or whatever. But um, yeah, I try to uh, keep it in the garage, especially in the winter time, because like if it, you know, it, it can get down to negative. It's been as cold as almost negative 30 here um, so yeah so uh so celsius that's negative 34 um so it's it's gets quite cold um so yeah so having having a remote star i mean sometimes it'll barely start you know so cold that you have to run the water all night just so the pipes don't freeze um, um yeah no i mean i don't have a garage at all so those those mornings where it's like zero which is probably as cold as I remember getting here yeah. is not fun, especially, you know, having to leave for work at like, you know, five, six in the morning. So add insult to injury. <laughs> yeah. And I, usually my last thing I do is go down to my car and leave. So it's like, yeah, like I could get out of bed, start my car and then go back upstairs, but it's, that's too much of a pain in the butt. So now I've got a, a, a garage door opener and a car starter right by my bedside. So I can open the garage door, start my car and then nice. snooze for a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be great. But anyway, um, that's that's what all the news that's fit to print over here. And uh, hey, if you want to support the show, there's a few ways you can do it. One is by leaving us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. It has been a while since we've gotten a five star review or any. Well, I should say any review. I have. Uh, we don't usually read the. Uh, uh, we don't. Well, we don't really get many um, negative ones. Uh, but if we do, we you know we usually read the five star, or four stars, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But the 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 flexitone lies fallow here with my. With my sound dampers, I can't use the flexitone until somebody writes us a five-star review. So if you're someone that's listening to the show for a long time um, and, and you always think, oh, man, I should write these guys a review, write us a review. It's been, it's been too long. Yeah, you come on, guys. Give, give Nate his money's worth. Like he bought the damn thing and used it like what, twice? Come on. I know. This, this is turning out to be a terrible investment. <laughs> oh, who am I kidding? I love this thing. Um, <laughs> You can also buy merch on our Etsy store, which I'm kind of thinking. This, so Etsy, I don't like the way they do things. They kind of like charge you even if you don't sell things. Like they charge you just to have the listing up, which kind of sucks. Mm. It's not a lot. It's like 40 cents a month. But I'm like, screw you guys. Why am I paying you 40 cents? So I might take the Etsy store down soon. We haven't sold much recently. And maybe uh, maybe what I could do is take it down. And then if you really want uh, something, you can message me about it or, or, or buy it off the Etsy store. But I've just been toying, toying with that. Let's We'll see what happens. You could sell direct. I mean, you know, if uh, we aren't moving a lot of uh moving a lot of merch might just be uh yeah you know a little more grassroots yeah and yeah and then i was thinking um you know as we um uh sell through the shirts and the mugs or whatever we could we could just put up like a t public store or something or that because that way they just they handle the shipping they handle the charging we get a tiny amount of money but like who cares like so if anybody wanted anything it might be a better deal for them and it might be a better deal for us to just do that mm -hmm. and not have to even mess around with any of the shipping not that it's a really big deal, but right. the last way you can support the show is becoming a patron on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You can help support the show. Um, and uh, speaking of which, hey -o! hey -o! we have a new patron and that is Peter from Illinois joining us at the $5.99 nice price tier. Oh Ooh, my goodness. Your Field neighbor dollar is getting really crowded there now. Um, Peter from Illinois. Thank you so much. He says, Hey guys, glad to be on board. Best wishes from, uh, for the new year and hope to see some other listeners in Florida next month. All right. Well, we hope so too, Peter. Um, as we record this, we are, uh, uh, 
being cautiously optimistic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> we're unsure right now, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see because uh, I mean, I mean, I think we're probably planning on going if it happens. Um, I think I think I'm just most concerned right now with the fact that they're playing two shows in Florida and then getting on a cruise boat. Um, and as we're recording this, they're we're setting records every day for new numbers of cases. And uh, I mm-hmm. know a lot of cruise lines are canceling and getting basically prevented from going. I don't know if this cruise will be a little different because I know some friends of my parents just canceled the cruise that they were going to go on because I guess all like all the ports that would stop in are like, no, 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 you're not stopping here. Right. <laughs> so they would just be on the boat. This, I, I don't think this is a cruise that necessarily stops in ports, but I, I don't know anything about it. So maybe it is. So, <clears throat> well, I, I mean, with, with, with this thing is like, I'm not, I'm not as like, I think I was saying um, recently um, that I'm not as concerned with things backsliding like they did before. Like I know that they're, they're not closing things down widespread. Um, right. They're not telling people to stay in and like, you know, having curfews and all that kind of stuff. What I'm concerned with is uh, putting money toward a flight, concert tickets, lodging, whatever. And then like having things be canceled or having restrictions put on certain things. And then, you know, having my money tied up and some stuff that I have to cancel because I don't want to just go somewhere and not have the, the, the plans that I wanted to have, because it's like, all right, well then if I'm just going to sit around and not be able to do everything I want to do, why am I even here? Yeah. And I, th- I think uh, my, my uh, there's a lot of things to be concerned with along the way. One is, are, are the flight, you know, so many flights got canceled over the holidays. Exactly. They just didn't yeah. have the staff to fly them. And then when we get there is the lot, I mean, hotels, I think can operate on a pretty bare bone. So I'm, I think they were in a, it's Airbnb, we should be okay. Uh, but then my other thing is if they cancel the cruise, I don't think Deep Purple is going to fly over here to do two shows in Florida and then all go back to their <laughs> their homes that seems like an awful lot of, for them and their crew and everything else so if they cancel the cruise i'm afraid they'll cancel the shows and then i mean it's it's florida so i don't think they're going to cancel anything from a, a business standpoint but the, I, you know if, if anyone at any point gets sick in the next few weeks in the band or in the crew that could be it so that's what i'm that, you know i'm ho- hoping everything just goes smoothly and hoping this tops out like everyone says it's going to do and and goes away but you know hey we're recording this weeks in advance so by the time this comes out it might we might it might seem like that was ridiculous to worry about or it might seem like um well they were they were wise to be worried <laughs> yeah well yeah well we'll see i mean like um uh, i i just think that the worry is a little bit different this time because if you're talking about how things were getting uh you know canceled or like things were going on like uh you know we year year and a half ago it was because of the unknown nobody knew what was going on now we yeah. know so much more and there are so many more people that are uh protected uh, you know that it's it's a little bit different now the, the worry has shifted to like um you know um, like i'm not afraid of you know getting deathly ill of course i wouldn't want to you know get anybody else ill um either that's why i think they're you know, being so, so cautious with it. I'm just, my concern is, is just, um, uh, like I said, just the, the financial part of it and the planning part of it, because also, you know, I, I gotta take time off of work. And, you know, to me, it's just like, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to take any time off that is, you know, going to be put to waste. Although honestly, like if everything was canceled and I was with you guys, um, and we were doing stuff, it would not be a waste because we'd find a way to have sure. fun. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, well, I'm certainly not worried for me now because I, I got super immunity for a while. So <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm worried for the guys in the band. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they, they, they've got to be very careful and all the crew and all them. And I'd hate to see any of them risk their health for doing a couple of couple of shows, even as important as they are being the first shows in almost two years. Uh, but yeah, hopefully everything, uh, goes well for more reasons than just the deep purple show obviously um mm. things turn around and things are able to go on but i guess well, time will tell by the time you're listening to this it probably will be very clear whether it's going to happen or not so mm-hmm. um probably not worth speculating more at this point from when yeah. it actually gets listened to um and hey speaking of our patrons i uh, got a little note in the in the mail uh with a little see what can you see what that is on the note little star with a g a little star with a g and that can only mean one thing right (laughs) 
Is the G for Gardo? The G, the G is for the Gardo. A little gold, <laughs> a little gold star with a G in it, uh, sealing the envelope. And I opened it up, and it says, um, "Here's a little note." Uh, it says, Nate had to share the sad news. Carl had a real good run. Happy New Year, Peter. So I was like, Carl, who is he talking about? I open it up and it's an obituary for Carl Bennett. And I'm like, so I look at this. I say, Carl Bennett, who's Carl Bennett? Well, let me read. Carl Bennett, entrepreneur and philanthropist and founder of Caldor Department Stores, died peacefully in his home in Greenwich, Connecticut on December 23rd mm. at the age of 101. Whoa. Good for him. There's a very long um, obituary here uh, to go along with it. Um, but yeah, 100. Well, good for him. He had a really great run. I, I, wow, I think, 101. Uh, yeah, P Peter nailed it. He had a real good run, 101. Found it, and you know that was his. That was in his uh, the top of his obituary. He goes on to kind of talk about his whole life here. Uh, uh, in the in, he served in World War II and all this uh, all this crazy stuff. Um, but yeah, he was a. He ends with he was a wise man who inspired us with his resilience, passion, honesty, integrity, and kindness. So, yeah, imagine that Carl Bennett, a real one, 101. Carl Bennett, Betty White. Oh, well, Betty White almost made it. Well, I'm a very, very close. Yeah, Carl Bennett beat her by a, almost a couple years. So, oh, but anyway, back to our patrons coming in at our executive level. We have at the ten pound tier, Dr. Jill Brees at the turn it up to eleven dollar tier, Clay Wambacher, Frank Thielgard, Mortensen, Allen, ain't too proud to beg, and Mickel Steen. And at the ten dollar, someone came tier, Ryan M, Jeff Bryce, Gerald Kelly, Victor Campos, Better Call Saul Evans, and Richard Fusey. Thank you to all of you so much for your generous support of the Deep Purple Podcast. As we talked already, um, we're gonna keep going. Uh, but uh, February 10th, Hollywood, California, Deep Purple, Hard Rock Live Arena, and February 12th, St. Petersburg, Florida at the Mahaffey Theater. February 10th, John's birthday. February 12th, my dad's birthday. My dad will be dropping me off at the Hollywood Arena, but he will not be staying for the show, sadly. And whether whether we're there or not, whether we see Deep Purple or not, me and Nate's dad are still having our birthdays. That's right. <laughs> we're still turning older. <laughs> whether it's, yeah. Hopefully it's celebrated at the Hard Rock Live around with Deep Purple and not like over a Zoom call <laughs> here or whatever, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, you know, either way, um, I made it this far. I still look this good. What are you going to do? <laughs> you got that right, John. John has the fountain of youth. I don't know. He doesn't look much different than he did when we were hanging out. Um, the, maybe the ravages of children have not uh, taken your taken your soul away. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, my, my, my brother has two kids and he, he looks pretty good too. Yeah, he does. It's those metology. Yeah. And so do your parents. So it's, it must be the metology genes. I just don't have, I, like, I, I think that I send you the picture of the other day of me. I, I saw myself in the mirror and I was like, Oh, <laughs> so around my house. I'm sick. I was wearing a <laughs> winter hat. I had my glasses up over the hat because I couldn't wear them. Cause I was wearing a mask at home. Yeah. I, I, but just, it was I, a, I, I literally was it walked a pink mask. My, it was a pink mask. Cause that's all we had. And um, I, uh, I, lo I literally walked into my bathroom. I saw myself in the mirror and I went, oh, <laughs> I made it an audible gasp because I look I looked like I was in like the hospital, like I was dying or something. I just I was, oh, my God. It was really guy? funny. I was like, oh. what did I say? You looked like you looked like one of the golden girls if they had COVID. <laughs> it was like Blanche you had like what, like a mask on. <laughs> Yeah, it was like the like a teal something and the, like the the pink mask, yeah. and it was like it was a hodgepodge because it was like literally the first winter mask I found. Like I just yeah. I like oh, I was I sickenly like reached into my, my into my closet bin of, of of winter hats and I took it out and I was like fine, I don't even know where it came from, and I put it on and I was like a teal mask, a, 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 a sorry a teal hat, a pink mask, and my glasses up over that so I could see absolutely atrocious terrible <clears throat> uh but anyway we didn't come to here to to tell you about masks we came to uh tell you about deep purple and um so we've got uh uh this show or i would say show this recording of deep purple on the bbc we so we had done this i think back last june it was around the time it aired then mm -hmm or was recorded then we reviewed kind of these early recordings and so this is going to come out just maybe a week to the date after they recorded this 53 years ago 
Um, it wouldn't air until um, uh, early February. And then again, I think late it was recorded, uh, repeated again in late March. Um, but this is the Mark One lineup doing uh, five songs. And uh, we're going to kind of break that down and talk about uh, talk about these songs, um, talk about um, the recording and uh, a, a little bit of background on them, too. These can all be far found on, on the Deep Purple BBC Sessions CD release um, that has all of these early Mark One and Mark Two sessions that they did live on the BBC. So kind of it harkens back to a different era when they, you know, bands would go on TV and or, or, or on the on the radio rather and play live and do these little interview segments. So it's pretty cool. Mm. The first one was, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff was unearthed and um, preserved, and so some of it the the, the sound quality is is varying. Uh, but we have not visited Mark One in a while, and it's always a pleasure. I mean, slowly we. We'll eventually run out of Mark One stuff to cover, um, mm. but uh, it's always unless good. new stuff gets uncovered. It could, it could. I mean, I mean, there's plenty of live stuff to do and plenty of other things. So just when you think we're done with Mark One, we aren't. Um, so uh, so here we uh, here we go. Um, it starts with a song called "Hey Bop a Rebop," and which there's other. I was a little confused by that one because I've heard this before and I listened to it and I, I actually had to, to pick it out and find the CD again and say, what the hell song is Hey Bop or Rebop? And when I listened to it, I was like, oh, I didn't know that that was the name of the song. Um, apparently it was written for, uh, what was it written for? So it was written for uh, this BBC show they did, which was a TV show. And uh, they, I guess they never... Uh, they they did it on the TV show. Those tapes are of course lost because they would just record over all those tapes, and um, then they did it again on this on this show. But I don't think it ever really went anywhere beyond that. So, mm -hmm. so hey bop a rebop. So ready to ready to dig into some hey bop a rebop there, John. I. Uh I was trying to think of something clever to say, but yes. <laughs> You're like, uh, yes. I'm like, yes, bop a re bop. <laughs> yes, bop a re bop. Uh, very clever. <laughs> mm. All right. So here we go. Um, find this one. Hey, bop a re bop live on the BBC. This would have been recorded January 14th, 1969. Is it on? I'm not hearing anything. Oh, there you go. You are not hearing anything because we haven't recorded in a few weeks and I forgot how to do this. And I've got so much <laughs> stuff in front of my screen. right. I got to redo my mm. configuration because I, I should show you this. There's so much stuff in front of my screen right now that I can't really see anything that's <laughs> that I need to see. So here we go. Hey, bop a rebop. Mark one groove there. Nice. Sounds like it reminds me of something that could have been like a green bullfrog outtake or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's because of, you know, Richie and that kind of funky syncopated riff. Oh, that's great. I think I always assume the song is called Gloria. Because he just keeps talking about Gloria. He never says hey, Papa Reba, that I can remember. <laughs> so it's kind of like a funky blues. Type of yeah, thing. I love, I love like between the percussive organ and, and him just breaking those strings. It, it sounds so cool. Damn funky. I mean, it's very standard 12-bar blues sort of progression, but it works really well. And that, like, funky little pick bass from Rod, uh, from Nip, sounds so good. Almost sounds like, like an early version of The Painter. 
Yeah, good call. I wonder if that's what it evolved into. <laughs> I love it. Early Richie Gibson solo. The bass on, on all these recordings, if I remember from the last one too, this sounds really funky and stands out really nice. Wow. I don't really hear Richie do a lot of uh, unison bends in his solos. That was pretty yeah. cool. Three and a half minutes, but they're sticking in their typical little trade off solo. Drums are a little lost when that organ starts screaming, but. Yeah, so I guess this song was reworked into the painter. Oh yeah? Yeah. Stands the reason. Did you just look that up or Yeah, I mean it says it here in the notes. Waiting for you, Gloria. Yeah. It's kind of that ending. Awesome. So what do you think That's about pretty that awesome. One? Oh, that, I think that was great. I mean, I always liked the the painter on uh, self titled album anyway. So I mean, kind of an early version or demo version or whatever you want to call it was um was pretty good too. Like that's like when I was hearing that, I'm thinking like that's that's kind of like everything that I like about early Deep Purple. Like if somebody was like, you know, had to like press me for like uh, what. What's like a, uh, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? A trademark or a signature? Yeah, like like if you wanted to like show somebody like this is what early Deep Purple is about, like this this would be a song that I would be like be like yeah listen to this like because I mean it's just good good rock you know it just showcases like you know all of their strong points it's like a it's a it's a cool song you know maybe not a hundred percent uh you know original but I mean it's got a lot of funk it's got good playing in it. Um, I like it. Well, I, I think they <clears throat> definitely fleshed it out well when they turned it into the painter. Uh, but oh yeah, like like we've always said, like that that twelve bar blues or standard blues thing could be really tired and really boring. But Deep Purple, more often than not, always tends to change those or, or to work those blues songs into being something special. And I think this is a great example, early example of that. And it's starting to show like. So they would have been the band would would have been broken up less than six months after this. Uh, well, mm -hmm. not the, the Mark One, sorry, would have been uh, replaced with Mark Two about six months later. But this really shows you, even though it's this is six months after the last one that we listened to, I believe um, mm -hmm. it's it's showing you the, the progression they're making and that sound of what Richie's doing and John are doing together is really starting to form and it, i can't help but wonder what would have i mean of course we, we wouldn't want to sacrifice in rock but it would be very interesting to see what would have what would a follow-up mark one album have sounded like if they had continued to go down this route uh rather than uh taking roger and ian on and going in that different direction because i i love both of them i love the direct and i really the, the more and more i listen to it and 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 think about it the the final deep purple self-title album was really good um yeah. it's it's got so many i wouldn't say it's like a complete perfect album or anything but it's got so many good strong things and they were being so experimental and trying and testing out all of these different ideas and concepts and what what would happen if they continued along that route with rod and, and nick um, i don't know i mean i feel like we we probably we must have talked about it before, but, um, you know, just thinking about it now, I would say that, you know, they probably would have gone, you know, down that, 
um, down that route of like, say, in rock, Fireball and Machine Head meets the first Captain Beyond album. Yep. Like, that's what I would like to think it would sound like, that they would still go down that heavy path. And like, you, you know that like in the early 70s, Rod had those, those chops to perform heavier type of music, you know, because, you know, when you heard the heavier stuff on the Captain Beyond album. So I think that it, my guess is it would have sounded something like that because Nicky was also a, a pretty heavy bass player. Like, I think he could have handled that, yeah. like if he wanted to, like, you know, that's, that would, that would be my guess is that it would be kind of a cross between those two. I feel like it would have been a similar direction, but would it have had the same impact without like, right. you know, Gillen's signature vocals? But probably not. No, but uh, yeah, and I wonder. Like, um, I, I can see where maybe they they couldn't have gone the direction, particularly that Richie was looking to go with Rod on vocals because he wasn't that style that he was really looking for. As much as we love him, but we've also often never bought the whole Nick Simper couldn't cut it on bass, and that's why they got Roger Glo- Roger Glover's great, and his songwriting is great, and. Obviously, we're huge Roger Glover fans, but I don't buy this like, oh, Nikki couldn't hack it nonsense because I, I think they probably just wanted a change. And um, yeah, I think know, it's from different a directions. Standpoint, that's what they what they wanted. But yeah, his, yeah. yeah, I don't know why they ever, ever went with that, that, that tactic of, of downplaying N- Nikki's uh, bass playing because it's always been really solid and work, fit the music really well. I always feel that like, you know, back back in the day more so than now, like that the whole myth of like when uh, when a band broke up or lost a member or something like that, the creating the story that there was inner turmoil was much more interesting yeah. than like, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, Nick had, um, didn't we talk about it once? Like he had more roots like in the in the 50s uh, style of music, like he didn't want to be heavier. Or, yeah, I mean, it could be. Yeah, I mean, it would. You know, I, I mean, he did kind of go that route with a little bit with Warhorse, but but he also had a lot of those guys are solidly uh, rooted in that '50s rock. So who knows? Or like, I don't know. Didn't maybe didn't want to take it in that same direction, which is totally fine. You know, I mean, it's just like if one day, you know, you wanted to do something with the podcast, uh, and I disagreed, and you decided to find somebody else to do it with, doesn't mean we hate each other. Yeah, but- Ah, oh, that John. He just wasn't cutting it. <laughs> yeah, he it doesn't know me, how to talk into a it microphone. Took, it took me 200 episodes to figure it out, but yeah, he was just he was holding me back. <laughs> holding me back. I don't know, you know, best best analogy I can think of, but I just well, think no, like that's that, a good you know. it's a good analogy because I think much like uh, I mean like the Beatles get back. I, I keep I keep harkening back to that because I think it's truly um remarkable documentary even if you don't like the beatles to just see how this mm-hmm. how this band operated how they played off of each other is fascinating because when you watch it you're like how did these idiots ever get anything done like they're just fooling around in the studio like paul mccartney i think is the only one that was like seriously seemed serious about anything <laughs> everyone else is just mostly john lennon is just a huge goof off just just did dancing around and singing and doing goofy stuff and Paul McCartney's keeping them on task. But at any rate, you take all these guys that are on their own or none of them are virtuosos by any stretch of the imagination and you put them together and this magic happens. It's the same thing with, with Deep Purple and getting these guys together and, and, the, and what they create. And it's the same thing when you and I get together and talk. Like, you know, I, uh, I mean, you could replace me or you with uh, a radio broadcaster who is like really <laughs> great at doing that sort of thing that we do. But, um, you know, there's some people that don't get our show and uh, are like, you know, some of them are, you know, just like, hey, you're talking over the music, which is like, okay. I was just going to say that. Stop talking over the music. I, 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 I couldn't hear the, the music. Like, I, like, don't you have this album? Come on, dummy. <laughs> um, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you know what you don't have machine head go go listen to machine head but um you know it's obviously the, the whole thing but but the people that started listening to our show it's I, either you enjoy the interplay between two friends talking about deep purple and other things or you don't. so it's 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 there's something there that yeah you could replace both of us and do the same style show with two experienced radio broadcasters and hey it'll probably maybe it would be better but some people wouldn't like it as much because it's it doesn't have the the interplay that they're used to or what they're what they're used to hearing which is much of why uh people 
fight about the different marks of Deep Purple. Ah, oh, this one's mm-hmm. the best, or that one's, I don't like this one, I don't like that one. Um, you like whatever magic that particular, you know, you might like what Richie and John bring to the equation with their interplay, but maybe you don't like what David and Glenn, Glenn bring, and th- that's fair. So, mm-hmm. even if we think you're crazy. All right, totally. sorry, I'm dying over here. Um, next track up, the, uh, the wonderful track. Here we go. Amaretta. Sounds very familiar. Yeah, it worked out <laughs> well, Richie. I always like this track. Yeah, it's, it's a great track. And I like it too because, like, Amaretta is just such a unique name. And it's not like Betty Sue or I don't know. Yeah. Well, it is um, Amaretta, Lalania, you know, the, the kind yeah, of unique. They pick good names, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Amaretta is supposedly about Emeretta Marks, the singer from uh, The Musical Hair. Awesome. It's really going heavy on the wand, this one. I love it. I mean, this definitely has to be around the time of the self titled album because this really brings those kind of vibes. Yep. Well, this is this was, um, they recorded the studio and the album version of this song three days later. So I Makes think it sense. worked out pretty well by this point. Sounds pretty close, yeah. Emeretta is fantastic. Emeretta, real Emeretta Marks. Yeah. A great singer. I don't, I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the show, but we are big fans of hair. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think we have. I think the only musical that we've really talked a lot about is Jesus Christ Superstar. Well, we'll have to start doing uh, four or five... Uh, episodes about hair a year <laughs> but hair was another good one hair is phenomenal fade um so the the way that the the schedule works and this is something we talked about i think on social media years ago and with allegra over at um gotta hear them all um we had gone back and forth the two of us just trying to figure out when would rod and emeretta have met and at the end of 1968 uh the last like couple of weeks of december deep purple were in new york doing like a bunch of shows and hair was on broadway at the time so we suspect Rod and Emeretta met, had maybe a brief romance, or maybe he was just infatuated with her, who, who knows, and um, uh, they would have met sometime in late December, and then here we are a couple, couple weeks later, and there's a song about Emeretta, um, so uh, I contacted Emeretta Marks, uh, and I wrote her this, <laughs> it's kind of funny, this was, um, this was, uh, God, almost well, two, two years ago? How, how, does, how does time work? Uh, oh, two years ago. Um, <laughs> this was in 2019. I reached out to her to just kind of 
I think it was when Allegra and I were going back and forth about how did this happen. So I wrote to her, I said, hello, Ms. Marks. First off, I'm a huge fan of your work in hair. Your contributions to that piece of American culture have left us with an incredible gift. Secondly, I'm of the host of the Deep Purple podcast. Recently, it's come into question about the Deep Purple song Amaretta and the question of when you may have met Rod Evans in 1968. Based on the hair schedule and Deep Purple's tour schedule, it looks like it would have been around the time of the year between December 20th and 31st in 1968. I know it's unlikely you'd remember the exact date, but do you recall any interactions with Rod meeting him or anything that may have inspired the song? Thank you for taking the time and thank you for the music. So I wrote that to her. And then <laughs> two months later, she responded, yes. <laughs> um, okay. So it, did, so it didn't really answer any of my questions. Actually, she responded on Valentine's Day. So maybe she was thinking of Rod then. I don't know. Yes, yes to all of it. <laughs> yes. So I was like, it didn't really answer my questions. But I'm nice. Well, nice that I, I mean, I guess if you <laughs> read into it, maybe the yes is is that you are correct in when you when you guess that she yeah. met him. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she was just like, I'm not reading all this. Yeah, fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe she was just like, you know, I mean, who knows? She's uh, I don't know how old she is, but she's probably going to be in her. Uh, she's 76, so she's the same age as the <clears throat> the older guys in the band, and. Um, <laughs> you could have, you know, you could have put a, um, you know, re reply to her, like with a, you know, giving her one of those per my last email. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> really pissed her off, you know, per my, I should have done that after like two days. Um, per my last email, I'm, I'm really waiting on a, on an answer to this. So if you could get back to me, um, uh, but, but yeah, if you, um, if you, if you look up any pictures of Emeretta marks around the time that she was in hair in the in the 60s you could see uh why why rod would have been infatuated with her um mm -hmm. and uh obviously great singer beautiful woman um and uh yeah so that's uh that's emeretta i'm glad we're breaking all this breaking news about <laughs> all this all the dirt i got from emeretta i've been sitting on that for years and i just i thought about it I just now actually i looked it up in facebook uh uh while we uh played the song because I, I just went back into my archives to find the, the message because I, I thought it was funny huh. anyway um next track up is a track we may have heard 10 or 11 times on the show another version of ring that neck a short version less than five minutes oh my goodness wow. do a 30 minute version on the BBC Given that these were on the radio 50 years ago, the sound quality is great. Yeah. I mean, the uh, the, the rhythm track is very uh, lacking. Like when they were doing like the, when they were doing the stabs there, you could barely hear the drums. Yeah, the drums are getting over. The, I feel like the bass cuts through very well, but the drums are kind of a little lost. It's the expected. Well, on the last track, they weren't. On Amaretta, they weren't. Yeah, maybe a little bit better. I think they were but, kind of I mean, drowned out a little bit on Hey Bop or Rebop. Yeah, on this one. By the organ. But I mean, regardless, I mean, like you said, for 50 years ago, radio broadcast. Yeah, I mean, it was recorded probably straight to tape, and uh, yeah, the mix was a little off. It was a little off, and there's obviously going to be audio degradation on the original tapes, so who knows. Yeah, but I mean, I would easily play any of these now and listen to them. Oh, yeah. Or want to, rather. I mean, in a way, I think some of this, uh, the feeling captured on some of these live performances uh, surpasses the album in some parts. Well, yeah, you, you definitely have that spontaneity of these sessions. You know, which are always nice to hear, especially when you're used to the album version. You hear something a little, a little different. It's nice. I was actually, I was actually listening to Hair not too long ago. And thinking just how amazing that production is and how short the songs are like a minute minute and a half long it's so short before you can even figure out what's going on they're cutting it i don't know how many tracks are on that it's got a good ton 23 tracks or something 
See, and that one I got into after Jesus Christ Superstar. So, whereas I remember Jesus Christ Superstar like way better, like that one I would have to hear it again to kind of get reacquainted with the songs, even though I I did play it a lot. I did enjoy it. It would all it would all come back to you. I remember watching the movie with you first time I saw the movie. Well, I got yeah, I got into it because of the movie, not knowing that it was made like ten years earlier or whatever as a '60s musical. Yeah, because the, the, the movie's fun. Yeah, the movie was like a late '70s production, so it was um, had a lot of a different kind of flavor to it than the. And who's you know, the, Williams and uh, yeah. Beverly D'Angelo and <laughs> yeah, Mel Carter, Thinking Mel about Carter in the movie. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Fugue here. Nice. Yes, I, I guess they, they must add like a bunch of different versions of this song. like whenever they were asked to play the song they're like okay how much time we got oh five minutes okay guys let's do the five minute version <laughs> this, right. that's what we're hearing here let's look let's just gonna put this in though <laughs> oh that's great it was going so strong <laughs> oh richie oh, yeah, uh, that's what i like uh one i don't know if i ever mentioned that it's one of the things that i liked about his early playing is, is like when he would do those like interludes where he'd stop and he'd play and then he would like stop and just like break the strings like really fast and then move on to the next section i always thought that that was really uh, a cool move that like uh, you know you could be like wow he really overused it but he really didn't because like I feel like whether he did it too much or just enough or whatever, it was always a cool thing to hear. Like you never got seen with it. Neat, 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 neat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, when you're on the um, level that he's on, it, it's, it, 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 it takes a lot to, you don't get sick of anything that he, you know what? When, when I, when I listen to myself play the guitar, I like, I can play, I can do some things. And I'm like, Oh, it's kind of cool. And then like, after like a couple minutes, I'm like, Oh, I'm so bored with all this <laughs> stupid stuff I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, of course that's me, but, um, yeah. but, you, and then you listen to somebody like Richie and you're just like, there's just never, you're never bored listening to him. He's always, even just listening to it. It's, he's always, you, you recognize all these Richie isms, but it's never, it never seems overdone. But even at the, like the way the song ended, like you could hear any other song like that and just be like, whoa, they really fucked up. But you figure like, you know, you're just laughing because you figure <laughs> Richie just ended it and he's like, yeah. And then he just walked off. <laughs> He didn't give a shit. Yeah, it's like and that. You after, and you love that. That Playboy after Doc, where he screws up that little thing. He looks at Pacey. He's like, man, eh, he shrugs his shoulders. He's like, eh, I don't care. <laughs> it's at the end of the day. It's like I'm Richie Blackmore. So like, who who cares? It's right. Sure but even then, I mean, he was like, if you think about it, he was. I mean, as as opposed to like now, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't really anybody yet. I mean, he was still him, but he wasn't like at that legendary status. But I just feel that he had that that just nonchalant, like devil may care attitude or yeah. whatever. And you hear it now and you just picture in your head, like what he must've been thinking or the yeah. band must've been thinking like, oh, okay, well, that was a shitty ending. Who cares? <laughs> and you just you love that, that about too. it. You, you just don't care when you're performing, you know, even the, the small amount of performing I've done, you flub something, you're just like, oh, well, it's just, it drifts off into the air and it's gone. I mean, well, now everything's right. being, being recorded or whatever, but even then you're just like, who cares? Like, I don't, right. he doesn't have anything to prove. And, and I don't want to say that, like, you know, I, I definitely don't want to come come off as like saying that that was a shitty ending. It was just it was not like the <laughs> perfect ending. ending. <laughs> it wasn't like 
but it was I mean, but it wasn't like way. a perfect was... ending or a planned ending or something but it was yeah. like uh flubbed i guess for lack of a better word and it's like it and it doesn't matter because to us that's just like that's great because that's part of the the radio or the live broadcast experience or, or whatever this is just like you know when you hear a lot of people talk about all the mistakes or the unplanned moments or what rock is really about and everything. And it's, it's true. And these recordings, it's great. I, I, w- I would rather hear that than the perfect, like precision ending. Well, like, I, like I said, it makes it more interesting when they, they had like, when they knew, like I was kind of joking about earlier, like, Oh, they, we have five minutes. Let's do that. Like maybe it was one of those things where he forgot they were doing the, fi- Oh, I think we're doing the eight minute version. And then he looked over at the clock is like, Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> He thought they were going to go back into the jam. So he just hit the first chord he could get to and he kind of flubbed it. He's like, oh, well, that's done. We'll move on to the next song. And you have like, you have him like in the booth, like giving you like the, <laughs> the cut sign. <laughs> Richie, this is the radio. We got to cut to a commercial. We don't have time for the 26 minute version. Oh man, it's great stuff. Um, but hey, before we move on, we have to do something. And that is of course, to thank our core level patrons coming in at the $7.77 cent keep it warm rat tier. We have Michael Vader at the episode $6.66 cent tier. We have Steve Coldwell, Arthur Smith, Anton Glaving at the $6.65 almost evil tier. We have Kenny Wymore at the $5.99 the nice price tier fielding follower, Robert Smith and... Hey-o. Hey-o. Peter from Illinois. Um, <laughs> that was that was a very unenthusiastic hi-o. Hi-o. Ah, there we you go. redeemed yourself. Just like Richie flubbed that last chord, you flubbed your hey <laughs> but the show goes on. <laughs> and at the five, $5 money lender tier, we have John Convery, German Heindel, Adrian Hernandez, Jesper Alman, Alexi, the perfect stranger, Slepikoff, James North, Mark Hodgetts, Kev Roberts, courtesy of his wonderful children, Matthew, Gareth, and Sarah, Will Porter, Zwopper, the Electric Alchemist, and Tim Southern Cross Johnson. Thank you to all of you so much for your generous support of the Deep Purple Podcast. Okay, so next up we've got um, Hey Joe. And before it is, before they do Hey Joe, there's an interview with, I believe it's John Lord. Um, but let's take a listen. Maybe we'll just listen to that interview in its entirety and, um, and, and, see, and see what they have to say here. It's frequently happened, you know, that groups have made it big in Britain and then gone on to be successful in the States. But Deep Purple are doing things the other way around, it seems. Rod, Rod Evans, that is. Come on, tell us how this came about, will you? It just happened when we formed. Uh Uh-huh. A deal came through, you know, for an American company. They wanted an English, if you like, rock band or something like that, you know. And we we put some numbers in the can and some down on tape. And uh, we sent them over to the uh, representatives of the American company. Mm -hmm. And... uh, they accepted us, you know, and it went on from there. We just released records over there, yeah. and um, they've all done very, very well. What's this as, story? As we were... I know one of your hits has been River Deep Mountain High. Mm-hmm. Well, it's you... the, the latest one out. You did it? a very long version of that. Yeah, about 10 minutes, 5 seconds, oh. on the um, on the latest LP, The Book of Taliesin. And uh, there was a lot of interest from DJs in America for this one track. And obviously 10 minutes, 5 seconds is too long anyway. Mm-hmm. So they just cut the intro out, and the solo, and the middle eight, and the outro, and uh, everything, you know. And it's doing very well. It's doing very well, yeah. yeah. Great. Is it going to be released here, do you know? Um, no, no, we don't really want it released here. We'd rather release one of our own numbers. All right, fine. Well, uh, as we haven't got a, a current single here in Britain for you, yeah. let's, let's pick one of the numbers you have uh, had released in America. I see you do Hey Joe. Has that mm-hmm. been out there? It's been out on an LP, Shades of Deep Purple. It's the first LP that was out there. Uh-huh. This is one of the tracks on the LP. Good, let's hear it. Okay. Okay. Obviously, I was wrong. It was Rod Evans and not John Lord. Are you thinking what I'm thinking about Rod Evans? What? <laughs> I could have just sounded like Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get over like I just was. I was visioning. I was like, I don't know if I've ever heard like an interview with him before. Well, but- yeah, that's what I was kind of shocked about. Was his, uh, you know, everybody except him was kind of an early mouthpiece for like. I mean, it was actually it was mostly John Lord. So yeah. So hearing him do an interview was kind of interesting, but um, uh, like, I didn't know, like I couldn't place who he sounded like, but I was like, he sounds like someone. But the other thing too was the interviewer was funny because he was like, when he was talking, he was like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, all right. You know, like, I, I, I don't care. <laughs> like, have you heard of, he's just like, Rod's talking. He's like, yeah, okay, yeah. I think he, right. has to, he has to keep the interview, like, let's keep it moving. This is radio, we gotta... We got to get onto the ads. We got to do this and that. 
And I just, I just kept thinking Michael Caine when I was hearing Rod Evans. Talk. So I haven't heard Michael Caine speak in a while, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's, that would be my guess. Have you ever heard that there's like two guys, I forgot who the guys are, the guys who do like the, the, the dueling Michael Caine impressions and they're uh-huh. like getting really angry with each other. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's, it's from the BBC as Steve, uh, Steve Coogan, I think is one of them. Um, but they're like, they're, they're like, one of them's doing it there. They just keep like yelling. He's like, no, that's not how you do it. And, then, but they both do really good Michael Caine impressions. No, it's good. Well, we'll have to listen to that after the show. Um, but okay. So that goes right into, and on the, on the, on the actual broadcast, it's like, okay, let's hear it. Boom. And it goes right into the song. Uh, so here we go. We'll, we'll uh, cut right into Hey Joe. Oh, I like this. Great. It's very suited to Rod's voice, too. uh, Richie doing his best Jimi Hendrix. (laughs) I like some of those flourishes better than on the album. Yes. I mean, again, it's a different version than what we've heard a million times, so that's why it's so refreshing to hear. I don't remember really caring for this all that much on the album. Me neither. And maybe it's the fact that they've had some extra time to play it now that we're hearing this live version. And they just Nikki and John Lord in the background. Oh, But I love how you're hearing like this. It's clearly Richie trying to summon yes, Jimi Hendrix in some ways, but then sometimes throwing in his his own more of his own style sort of thing. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there was uh, another half minute of musical introduction John Lord had borrowed from ballet music from the Three Corner Hat that's what it's mm-hmm. called but this is a uh, I think this is one that they recorded off the air if I'm reading this correctly that I ever really cared for this whole like Spanish matador section in this like I never really got it yeah because it just like it wasn't I mean no they were putting their own stamp on it but right it's I don't know it, to just throw that particular thing in there for one second yeah like hey Joe kind of had its own flow to it and then it kind of put that in and I always kind of kind of zoned out like oh, okay here we go <laughs> You know, like I just hear like, and I'm like, Olay! 
Hey, Joe. <laughs> hey, Joe. Yeah, immediately, immediately tune out. But why are you charging I, I, toward that red cape? <laughs> da, na, 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 na. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a, I think it's a good version. I think it's, Oh, it is. It is. Um, I still like, I think it's a great version, but I have to say for, um, if for, in my opinion, the, uh, that whole matador section is just like, it, it still doesn't translate well for me. Like I wish that they had done a version where they didn't have that. Yeah. Although I am glad that mercifully it's way shorter that it was on the album. Is it short? I don't remember how long it was on the album, but yeah, I mean, the, the, they don't do it for very long here. So, I mean, yeah, which is forever. good because it would, if you did that for any longer, it would get very old. And, mm -hmm. and also, just like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Um, but all right. Um, so, that brings us to our last track uh, on this particular recording, which is uh, It's All Over, which is a song, uh, which is a cover original by Benny King. Uh, so this is the second version of it. I guess they had done another uh, version of the song, but this, this is probably the one that was recorded or at least the one that they had. Um, uh, all right, so let's, uh, let's take a listen to this final track uh, from this particular date, almost 53 years ago. In the album Seven Letters. Producing speech alone. A pretty bird comes to play. And I know, I know I must have cried a tear drop. A ton of crazy people about scared that pretty <clears throat> Critical alert from Microsoft. Your computer has alerted us that it is infected by a virus and or spyware. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, my God. 
nervous for I, a minute. I didn't think you could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> like, is somebody talking to me? I guess you're gonna be treated to that on the freaking YouTube video. <laughs> they don't ban this episode. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to do this covertly. Um, pleasant. Yeah, that was, that was a good, uh, good version. Um, I mean, I well, I don't know if it's a good version because I've never heard the original. But um, I say it was probably like the least like um, um, of all the you know um, broadcasts that we heard today. Anyways, it was probably the least um, interesting. I guess like it wasn't bad, but I mean, it was just kind of like um, I, I felt it was yeah. not kind of nondescript you know it was like it was yeah. all right but it's, it's them doing a, a cover song and yeah you know that's not really what most people are looking for from deep purple or whatever they're looking for um well i mean in 1969 maybe mm -hmm. <laughs> they were in in england yeah. but uh you know obviously 50 years later you want to hear deep purple being deep purple and that's kind of what we heard more on the other tracks right it is what it is um, I was trying to queue up the before my computer was lying to me saying it was infected by a virus. I was trying to queue up the Ben E. Um, Yikes. King version. That's one of those like pop up ads. It's like, oh, your computer's been infected with a virus. You should definitely download the super cool software that's going to take care of it for you. Like, okay, <laughs> sure, I'll get it right is. on that. Um, but yeah, an interesting, uh, an interesting look into. Um, some deep purple pa past way past um and uh, i thought it was a uh, thought it was pretty good yeah um uh, gonna make one last final uh perhaps vain attempt to get this uh get this uh file here uh, it's gonna work ah uh, no screw it screw it we just won't do it um, it's a bunch of lying software here all right well we won't we won't <laughs> listen to it but uh go and listen in your own time to the benny king version and see how it compares and you can you can check out for yourself and be try to yeah. be better prepared next time i can just kind of put these show notes together about five minutes before you you join the call <clears throat> um but yeah that's uh Deep Purple, BBC, 1969. Short, a little shorter episode for everybody, um, as we like to do from time to time, um, for your sanity and for ours, um, as we get ready for the next one. And and uh, and I am I am honest when I say I don't know what the heck our next episode is going to be. We'll we'll see shortly. Mm. It should it it'll, it should be an amazing one. Uh, it but should before be something. We, before we sign off, of course, we have to thank. Our foundation level patrons coming in at three dollar and thirty three cent halfway to evil tier. We have Raf Calf at the three dollar nobody's perfect tier. We have Peter Gardo, Ian DeRosier, Mark Roback, Duncan Leesk, Stuart McCord, and Flight of the Ratbat Blue Light. And at the one dollar made up name tier, we have the heavy wind resistant Leaky Mausoleum, the Stephen Somerville, the Concerto 1999 fanatic, Spike the Rock Cat, JJ Stenard, Hank the Tank, Private Eyes, and Ashen Lionel. Thank you so much to all of you for your generous support of the Deep Purple Podcast. We will, of course, be back at you next week with who knows? Who knows what kind of craziness? John's, for those of you uh, not watching, well, even if you're watching, you probably won't be seeing him right now, but he's, <laughs> he's slowly raising the, the red the devil, devil horns. horns. <laughs> slowly coming up into the shot. <laughs> We're going to be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Oh, no, I was trying to, trying to you know move. what I'm trying to do. You'll have to talk so the YouTube can see you. There you go. All hail the Malork. <laughs> all hail the, the tiniest little red hand in all of Rhode Island. All hail my tiny red hands. Stay away, stay away. <laughs>
I put the carrots on you. <laughs> all right. We're fizzling out here, folks. But thank uh, you, everybody, right. for joining us. Come at us again next week. Subscribe in your podcatcher or subscribe on YouTube, and you will yeah. be treated to another episode. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Deep Purple Podcast. If you like what you hear and would like more episodes in the future, please donate on Patreon to support the show. You can also leave us a review in Apple Podcasts to help new people discover the show. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for show updates. See deeppurplepodcast.com for more details. Thank you for listening.